Hey leaders, how would you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 for your leadership? Think things are going well, teams getting along, good vibes, working towards your goals, or is there room for improvement? Do you even know if there's room for improvement? And here's a question. Do you even know where you're leading your teams to? Is it to more sales, scaling the company, growth individually or as a team? Today's guest is an expert in transformational leadership, so let's ask him where we should be going. Expert Connections starts now. successful in business, some say it comes down to leadership, but what does that really mean? Welcome to Expert Connections, where we connect you to experts to help you grow your business. I'm Julie Holton. Our guest today, Don Williams, at just 19 years old, he was the number one sales rep in the country. Pretty great for a 19-year-old, wouldn't you say? Six years later, he founded his first company, the first of many, more than a dozen that would follow over the next nearly 40 years or so, and he credits transformational leadership. So what does that mean? Join me in welcoming Don Williams to the show. Hi, Don. Hey, Julie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be with you today through the magic of Zoom. I know the magic of Zoom and the power of the internet. Don, here you are, and you will actually be here in person in Lansing, Michigan in a few weeks. I'm so excited to hear you talk in person today, a little bit of a preview of that conversation, but also just talking about leadership in general. I feel like, Don, sometimes leadership can be one of those frou-frou words that get tossed around, that people know they need it, but a lot of, especially startup founders are thinking, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, I got that. I need to focus on these other things. But really, you say that leadership is the core of what makes a business successful. So before we dive into that, can you give us a little bit of your background? Tell us about your entrepreneurial journey. Oh, my gosh. So um, it does span almost four decades now. That doesn't seem possible. But uh, I started my career in sales and um, and and I was a, a accomplished salesperson, and I, I really think I don't know that I was that good. I think people like to buy from me, and I learned uh, just let them buy. That'd be okay. And so um, then, after a couple of years, I started my first company in Wichita Falls, Texas, and I built that company twenty two locations, no outside capital, no debt. We did it the old fashioned way. We made a lot of money and we invested that money to grow our business. And um, and since that time, I've worked primarily with Fortune 500 companies on marketing, sales and service strategy and execution. You know, how do you do it and then actually go do it? But the thing about leadership to me that makes it foundational is just that um, just like a high tide lifts all boats, leadership lifts everything in your company and um and not just your company but your family life and your personal life and leading other people is probably not the biggest challenge probably the biggest challenge is leading ourselves and um and so but as we elevate our leadership um everything else goes along with it it's so interesting to hear you kind of hint at the the work that starts within before we can start leading other people. What inspired you to be, you know, to become this thought leader? You have a podcast, you travel the world speaking, and it's all focused on leadership. Why? What makes you so passionate about this? Um, you know, I think everybody has a uh, a superpower. Everybody has something that really is their art. I think artists. You know, if you look at if you look at very accomplished artists, who are the highest paid people in the world? Well, you know, in in ancient Italy, it was Leonardo da Vinci. He was basically the the Bill Gates of that time, and you know, he's maybe most famously known for painting the Sistine Chapel, even though he actually was a sculptor and he kind of painted under duress. The Pope told him he had to do it, and so he did. But I think when we practice our art and everybody's art is a little different. That's when we function 
um, in our zone of magnificence in the area where we can really make magic happen. And so um, all my life, I've, uh, I, th I think I was born, uh, some of the wires and how I was constructed um, were prone to leadership. And then over the years, um, you know, I have uh, learned not the tricks of the trade, but I've, I've tried to learn the trade. And, um, and so many times people get a little lost in learning the tricks of the trade. I'm like, oh man, just go learn the trade. It'll be so much easier. And, um, and so I've been blessed that, that, that is my, um, it is my art and, and I've, and I've got m way more than 10,000 hours in studying and practicing and, um, and I think that if you want to make wholesale improvement in whether it's your personal family or business life, and, and I don't really think as an entrepreneur, you can, you know, you talk about work-life balance and I'm like, ah, it's always out of balance. There's no such thing as balance. Yeah, um, it's just life too, it's right? Just, it's life. <laughs> That's right. Um, but you cannot be one kind of employer and a different kind of person you cannot be one kind of husband and a different kind of person you cannot be one kind of parent and a different kind of person and so um contrary to what a lot of people think leadership all starts within it doesn't actually start on the outside and um and some people are discouraged to hear that they're like oh i i thought maybe i could just you know put out a memo and i'm like well you can <laughs> but but it won't it won't you know accomplish the results that that you seek Don, tell me about this book that you'll be giving away in person when you come to Lansing. Gratitude, stories from our heart. What That word gratitude, what impact can the power of gratitude have in business? I don't think anything can affect your life as much as practicing gratitude. So here's a physical copy of the book. We're going to give away e-copy so I don't have to carry a hundred copies of the book. But um, but But the words are the same. And so, you know, it's all good. And uh, the message on gratitude is this. Six or seven years ago, I began the intentional daily practice of gratitude. And, um, and my mission with that book is to impact a million people to begin the daily practice of intentional gratitude. And the interesting thing about gratitude is the more you practice it with intention, you set out to what am I grateful for today? And many people, they haven't had that thought in years. Okay. And so I'm not saying they weren't grateful in years, but they, but they haven't had that thought like, so specifically, what am I grateful for today? But the interesting thing about gratitude is this, the more you practice gratitude, the more grateful you become. And the more grateful you become, I don't want to say the better things go, but we know this. It's not what happens. It's how you take it. And so the more you practice gratitude, the better your reaction is to things that happen. And we know as entrepreneurs and business people, we have to have pretty thick skin. We have to, uh, that movie Frozen, what was that famous song? Oh yeah, we, we have to let it go. Okay. <laughs> we can't carry it with us forever. And um, and the more that we practice letting those little things go, and and if nobody's dying, it's probably a little thing, you know. Um, people will make a lot of money and lose a lot of money and lose staff and companies will go awry and life is full of an uncertain um, bag of events. But but most things, um, you know, if you can write a check for it and make a problem go away, it's probably not a real problem. Um, it might seem like a real problem, but compare it to the people who have problems that writing a check won't make it go away. And, and that kind of puts it all in perspective. You know, it's interesting when you talk about the transformation that can happen as you're even verbalizing the things that you're grateful for. I've talked on this show about this practice that that we have in place with our 15 year olds, because, you know, Don, I'm sure you would agree that it starts young and the younger we can get our, our teenagers or children to start practicing these things, the better off they'll be later in life by the time they get to where we are. But we, you know, we started this practice with our 15 year old and we call it Proud and Gratefuls. 
Um, and we say one thing that we're proud of that we did that day, one thing that we're grateful for. And then actually we should add one more word to the title. We also, we also add one thing that we're excited for from the next day. And I have found that there are many days when I, in the beginning, there would be, there would be many days where I think, gosh, what am I proud of? As entrepreneurs, we tend to think of all the things still yet to be done instead of celebrating perhaps even the little wins along the way. And then adding in that gratitude piece. It really does change your mindset then throughout the day of, of the subsequent days as you're going, you know, when you that. talk about practicing gratitude, um, how would you like, where do, where does someone start if they're struggling to find even one thing to feel grateful for? So, man, that's a great question. And I love the exercise you're doing inside your family. That's amazing. And, and as I've been on this gratitude journey, I've heard literally thousands of stories of people who have unique um, gratitude practices, and and they're all right. I mean, there's there's none of them that are wrong. If you were starting, I have a good friend. Um, she's passed away now, but uh, she lived in Singapore. And before she got out of bed every morning, she, her gratitude practice was to say, I am grateful for everything 100 times before she even got out of bed. Now, I kind of want my coffee before that, but, <laughs> but that's her practice, okay? And that serves her well. And so I would tell you this, if you're just starting and you don't know where to start, okay, start when your eyes first come up in the morning, when your eyes first open, okay? And find one thing before you even get out of bed. I'm grateful for this. Okay. And, and it's, it's stronger in your brain if you verbalize it as well as think it and even stronger if you verbalize it. And if you write it down, I know people who record and I know people who do all kinds of different practices where we talked about that, but, um, but just start right there. And so I'll, I'll share something personal and maybe I'll be able to get through this. So um, like today, I'm grateful for 10 years with my senior dog who we lost last night. And so it's a matter of how you see things. I'm, I'm still sad and emotional about losing my dog. Um, but I'm so grateful for the 10 years I had with her. And so, um, as you begin to practice gratitude, your brain is a magnificent tool and it will start finding ways, um, for you to find gratitude about things that maybe at surface don't seem like you'd be very grateful for, but remember, it's not what happens. It is how you take it. Absolutely. And what a what a beautiful way of looking at even loss or challenges that entrepreneurs face. I know there have been times in my own journey where in the moment I've said, well, thanks a lot. I didn't really think I needed to learn this lesson again. Um, but yes, finding gratitude, being grateful in those moments for how you will overcome perhaps that adversity. So Don, when you come to Lansing, you're going to be talking about transformational leadership. And I, I, I know we don't want to give it away, but what is one thing perhaps that we can share that the audience can look forward to coming out of your talk? Awesome. So thank you so much. I'm so grateful to Washington Avenue Advisors. It's their leadership talk series, and they're bringing me to Lansing to share my talk on transformational leadership. So things that are transforming are changing. And, um, you know, think about the Hollywood movie, The Transformer, where the trucks turn into robots or whatever. Okay, transformation means to change. Leadership, again, is the high tide that lifts all boats. So the very first thing is you have to be leading people somewhere. You have to be leading people to something. And you'd be amazed at how many leaders aren't actually doing that. They're trying to lead to a good week or a good quarter or a good year. And frankly, that's just not good enough. And so if you want to be a transformational leader, changing your life and helping other people change their lives 
you got to be leading them somewhere. You got to be leading them to something. And so my talk in Lansing is, um, is a talk slash workshop. So you'll actually leave the event. Um, you'll be able to print out a 25 page PDF that will be your blueprint. Um, maybe not to the peak of the mountain of transformational leadership, but for your next steps towards the peak. Um, regardless of where you are in your entrepreneurial journey or your leadership journey, there's always a next step to take. And so um, my talk is designed so that you'll leave with your blueprint on the next steps for you to take to get to the top. You're speaking my language. I love those actionable takeaways. Like you said, leaving with the blueprint and this series, Don, that Washington Avenue advisors and their team have put on this, this leadership talk series has been incredible. So we have a lot to look forward to having forward to having you join this series. One last question for you, Don. You know, as I'm as I'm sitting here listening to your stories and hearing you talk. You, I, I can feel your passion and and even already be drawing on some of this inspiration. And I can tell that you get a lot out of being able to pour into others. What is it about um, this, this field and being able to speak and to pour into these teams and into leaders? What motivates you to do this work? Wow. So thank you so much for asking. So it kind of goes back to you know, whatever person's art is and where they can be magnificent. Um, and so my mission, my personal mission, I have a personal mission, I have a business mission, mission for my family, but my personal mission is to help others help others. And, and I love to help. And I really love to help people who are helping other people because it's a magnitude. It's, it's, it's a ripple you know, has a bigger impact. And then my core values, which are the same in my business and in my personal life, my core values are really simple. They're just you and me. And so uh, the why, the you part is between the two of us. You come first, I come second. The O is outstanding effort. I will always give you my absolute best effort. The use for understanding, the more I understand and the more you understand, the better, you know, we'll do together. The M is I'm very mission oriented. What are we trying to achieve? Because I don't know how we figure out if we win or lose, if we don't know what we're trying to do. And then the E is for enthusiasm, which really comes from two Greek words, N and Theos. Doesn't mean loud and screaming and setting your hair on fire. N and Theos means God within. And that can be just your passion. Um, and then the last four letters are IASM, which is an acronym for I am sold myself. And if you really want to lead people, you got to be sold yourself, helping others help others. And then it's all about you and then me. Come here, Don Speak in Lansing, Michigan on September 15th. We will link to the information, the registration information. Thank you so much for being on the show today and sharing with us some of the insights that you'll be sharing for the folks in Lansing, Michigan. Thank you, Julie. And I will see you all in Lansing, September 15th. And that does it for this episode of Expert Connection. Be sure to like and subscribe, and you can click over to watch more videos in our Business Connection segment.